Hello and welcome back. In the last lesson, we left off where we created that serialized user function. And so we've made some good progress to connect the, the flow of the authenticate on the login method all the way through some of the other express middleware. And it's all starting to come together quite nicely now. Where we need to turn our attention to is this verify callback function that we left some scaffolding console log and a few comments when we set it up initially. We really need to now take a look and see what is required for us to do in this verify callback in order to make the authenticate flow work in the way that we do want it to. And, and this is like the part where we need to actually do the actual database checks and, and the security to see if the incoming user is actually correct. So if we head on over to Visual Studio Code and we take a quick look at where we left this passport.use function a few lessons back. Just as a quick reminder, this is the, the verify callback function and the arguments that are coming in here is the request, the username and the password. And there's also this done callback that we can make use of to notify the passport.authenticate that's on the login that we've done the checks and we've returned the information that it will need to continue its, its work that it's doing. And to get started, the first thing I wanna do here is just add some extra information into this console log here, and I'm just going to simply JSON stringify the username. I think that'll be useful to see what's coming in there. I'm going to remove this comment that we've originally left there from the previous lesson. Now, the very next thing we want to do here is as we receive the incoming username, we want to search our database to see if that, that username that's been sent from the request is actually matched and that uh, username that is sent through is actually a, a real user in our database. And just as a, a quick reminder, even though this is called username and that's the, the standard for Passport Local, it's just the naming convention they followed. For us, the way that we've designed our database, we actually gonna be searching by email. So username and email are kind of the same thing in, in our context. If we just take a, a close look at our DB class that we created in module four, we have this find by email static method here, which takes in an email and then searches the records for any matches and then returns the user if there is a match, otherwise it returns false. So let's implement this first check. And the first thing we need to do at the top of the file is require in our database class. So we'll do that from the lib folder and there's that DB file that we can import. And once that's imported, we can then do our, our check, we can invoke that find by email function. We're gonna do this by setting up a variable called user. So we'll say let user, and then we'll reference the DB uh, find by email. We're just going to pass in that username that comes from the arguments in this callback and pipe that into the find by email. And then we are either going to get a user object that exists or a false value over here. And if we do get a false value here, it means that the database doesn't contain a email address or user with uh, the specified username that's coming in. So we can do a conditional check here to say, if there's not a user, we're going to return this done callback. And remember this done callback has two parts to it. The first part is, is there an error? And I'm going to say null for now. Uh, we'll get to this in a moment and then for the user, we're just gonna pass in false so that it's a, a negative value. If we make it past this conditional check, then the next step is going to do the work to check the password and validate that the passwords match. Before we do that, let's just make sure our server's running and let's just do a quick test to see what's happening here. In order to do a quick test and see if this find by email is working correctly, let's just place a console log here and we'll say user from db and then we'll just pass in a json stringified version of the user i'm going to hit save and head on over to postman we're going to do a register to make sure we've got a a user that matches these details once that's run let's use the same username and password pass that into the login let's see what what comes out in the terminal we've seen we've hit the login handler the local strategy verify callback has been called. So just to have a visual of that, here's that number one, we've hit the handler. Then the next step is it's been passed through to this passport.use and the, the username that we're getting at this stage is john at test.com. 
These two lines have been run and we hit this console log here. We see we got the user and it is indeed uh, John Smith with that email address. And so we do get back the security with the password hash in it, which is going to be important for the next step. And then it continues on with the flow. It's still passing through this test that we've created earlier. So this was just to check exactly if this find by email is working and it is indeed working. And so I'm going to just delete that console log that was just to kind of inspect what's going on. We've now done the work we needed to do to evaluate the username slash email address that's coming in. The next part is if we make it past that step, we want to inspect the incoming password to check if there is a password and that it indeed matches the password that's been set by the user in the original register post request. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to leverage that bcrypt package that we've used previously. And there's a convenient method on there called compare, which we can use to do the work to evaluate the password. At the top of the file, we're just going to reference the bcrypt library and then require that in. And once that's done, we've got a reference to bcrypt. And I'm just going to make a comment here and we'll say compare incoming password to stored password. And we'll just say using bcrypt. The way that we're going to need to do this is we're going to have to set up a promise here. The reason is the, the bcrypt compare method is going to take a few moments to go through the, the decryption and encryption processes and the salting and the hashing that we've all set up. To set up this promise, I'm going to say constant and we'll just call this result for now. This promise is now going to be an asynchronous operation. I'm going to mark this as await and we'll say await new promise. You'll notice as soon as I've typed that await, it's got that red squiggly lines. We'll deal with that in a moment. But this promise will take in a callback and the two arguments will be, we'll have the resolve and reject, which we can then do some handling in the body of this callback function. Uh, but let's just take a moment to deal with this await problem that we have here. Because we're calling the await, we're obviously going to need to mark this whole callback as asynchronous by using that async keyword in the beginning of the function here. It's going to deal with that problem. Now we can safely use the await key keyword here to set up our promise. In the body of this callback function of the promise, this is where we're going to do the work to set up that bcrypt comparison. We do this by referencing bcrypt. We'll start typing out compare and you'll see that we can use IntelliSense just to to auto populate that method. If we just hover over it for now, we'll see that it takes in th these two arguments, uh, data and encrypted. So the first argument there, data is going to be the incoming password string literal from, from the request. The second one is gonna be the, the password hash that's stored on the user. So we'll open up our parentheses there. And so the, the first argument we're gonna pass in is going to be the actual password that's coming in from the request. That's the value here that we, we get from this verify callback arguments. So we'll pass that in as the first parameter over here. And the next value is going to be the already encrypted or the, the hashed password. And we'll get that from the user security password hash. The last argument that goes into this compare function is a callback. And this callback will have an error and a result that we can make use of. Very simply, we'll just do some error handling in here. We'll say if there is an error, we'll then reject this promise with that error. Otherwise, if there is no error, then we will resolve this promise with the result. So that was a little bit of, of code that we needed to, to set up in order to do that comparison. Let's test this out now by doing a simple console log. And we'll just say result and we'll log out the actual result. I'm just going to comment out the return here because I just want to see what we're getting back from this result and maybe test a few cases. So I'm going to save our work to date. Uh, hopefully everything's working correctly. Let's head on over to Postman. So once we're in Postman, we can head over to our register, make sure we have a brand new instance of John Smith saved in our, our database. Once that's done, we can then hit the, the login endpoint here. So for the first test, let's just pass in the, the correct value for password. I'm going to hit send. And then you see we've got that hanging request because we're not returning anything back to the authenticate function. But this just gives us an opportunity to inspect what's going on. We see we've hit the login handler. Number two, we've hit this local strategy verify, the username that's coming in. 
we've searched the database for that user, all looking good. The result that we get back here is a Boolean value true. This just confirms to us that the code that we've set up to compare the two passwords is working correctly and as expected. Out of interest sake, let's test a case where we send in an incorrect password just to see what's going to happen to this result. If we head on over to Postman. I'm just going to cancel that request. We can run a, another register just to ensure we have a brand new instance of, of John Smith. And let's run this login again. This time I'm just going to put a string in here and we're going to say incorrect password just so we make it clear that this is the incorrect password that's being passed in and then I'm going to hit send. We still get that hanging request as expected. However, if we take a look at the flow of our code, number one, we've hit that login handle in the router. Been, the control's been passed back to this verify callback. We've checked our user. We've done the comparison, but in this case, the result is false. So we get back that uh, Boolean value of false. And so now we have a way to conditionally handle the flow of this authentication. And if we have a true value from the, the password comparison means the email, password is correct, we can now continue authenticating our user. If anything went wrong here, we need to now handle the case. So if something went wrong with the, the email address, we're gonna return over here. And if we continue with the correct email address and a correct password, we can continue the flow and say everything's working fine. But if we have a correct email address, incorrect password, then we need to handle that kind of endless authentication flow saying that the credentials provided or some type of message saying, the user is not authorized to continue. We've done quite a bit of work to get it to this point. Let's just take a quick break here. In the very next lesson, we'll continue wiring this up. There's a bit of work to do in the verify callback as well as back in the router. So I'll see you on over in the next lesson. Cheers for now.